Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Secret Everything podcast, secreteverything.com. I am Kimberly McGeorge, DCNH, and I am here with my good friend, Elizabeth Allenbacher, and we are going to be talking about, uh, I think you know this concept kind of through the junk consciousness, new age community as a certain thing. When we start talking about, we can talk also, Liz, about uh, light language too. Uh, light codes, light language, you know, what does that mean? Where is that coming from? Is it a hundred percent? These are things we can kind of riff on Liz. Uh, is it a hundred percent accurate? Um, you know, how do we know? Um, is it like speaking in tongues? Is it like, you know, what is it? So we're going to be talking about that. Um, we're going to show you some examples. Um, Liz, are they allowed to um, grab them or not? Um, yeah, sure. They can grab these ones. Okay. So you guys, uh, this is kind of a gift podcast. You can uh, grab the screenshots and print them out and use them in life. And there'll be instructions and suggestions. Of course, you're always welcome to use your own knowing. But um, before we get into that, I want to tell you a little bit more about Liz and have her introduce herself. This is her Instagram where you can see her beautiful. I should have put your tattoos here, some of your tattoos here. Uh, maybe I can go back and add them to the slide. But um, she is a fairly magical tattoo artist. I really think she's a healer. Uh, obviously, she is able to bring forth a certain frequency in, as you will see in uh, light codes. And that's how I would explain it. But, you know, I'll let her explain it when we get to that. So is there anything you want to say about who you are as an artist or a tattoo artist or anything about your story? So, um as a tattoo artist, I focus in a lot on like nature themes and floral work. I do like a lot of mandalas um, and just kind of stuff that I think is kind of more like ornamental and I'm pretty open to doing anything as far as that goes. And now where that merges over with like the light codes and light language and that um, when I was 12 I actually had started seeing things on paper and I was able to follow what I was being shown and I if I didn't perfectly follow what I was shown it was taken away so I couldn't see the vision anymore for it and that later kind of transformed into me being able to connect and get actual light codes and bring them through to help people and it wasn't just kind of like a random thing that I was doing. Um, so that, yeah, that's kind of how those two things ended up merging. Say what you said again about if you didn't, what did you say about if you didn't put it, say that whole thing about it would be taken away. What did you say about that? So basically I will visually see on paper what I'm supposed to create for light codes. And so when I go in, um, I pretty much am just shown exactly what I'm supposed to make. And if I don't, if I wouldn't follow it perfectly, okay, it would completely disappear on me. So that's kind of a corruptible, incorruptible test as far as your oversoul, which we'll get to who you think is bringing it through or whatever, whoever, whatever, well, let's leave it open for now is bringing that through it's kind of a like their or your corruptible incorruptible test in a way mm -hmm. but so yeah I've been frequency or integrity remains true to the intent and doesn't get corrupted right correct yeah mm -hmm. and if it I'm at a point now too where if it were to get corrupted, I can identify it and then I'll just get rid of the whole thing. And how do you see that? How would you know if it was corrupted? So for me, I know if it's corrupted, if like I'll usually connect to a certain frequency and that's usually connected with like a specific color for me. So like my favorite channels to work off of are blue and gold. Um, so if I were to randomly, let's say pop over to red, I would know that it was corrupted and I was working with things that I didn't want to work with anymore. Hmm. That's really interesting and super cool. 
All right. So let's just like go back to this. So we're going to go back to the, uh, all right. So we're going to take a look at um, some light codes and um, talk to us about these light codes or, or what you want to say about, let me ask you this before you talk to us about okay. these light codes. Um, who or what? or where um is it like the white buffalo uh that you know is coming in and doing these is it like the nine winged collective is it like some gray alien like where are these coming from sister okay so uh at different time periods i'll connect to different things and it kind of also depends on where um or who or what i need to bring in for me, a lot of my codes originally were done connecting to the Fae and Elementals. Um, and that's, I would say, where like most of them come from. But I also have connected with like Arcturians to bring stuff like that through. Um, but I could really connect anywhere I needed to to bring in the frequency I need to for that specific piece and for the person I'd be creating the piece for or people, depending on what it is. Those darn art trains are everywhere. Goodness. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about dimensionality. And even though there are technically no dimensions, you know, from a 3D perspective, you and I both know that's how we put some measures on things, I guess, for what we would call frequency power. Or, or power of light or intensity. Um, where in your estimate, like, are these three all the same? Like what, if we had to say a dimension, well, dimensions, where, what, where do you think these are heading via this group or one of these? Let me go back and look at them real quick here. These were three of the, so I had a download that solidified like, oh, I can do, light codes I can bring this through wow. and these were three of um the first ones that came through for me oh, wow. um, that's cool. so they're very special ones um I'm <laughs> I know that you were probably uh pretty high dimensionally let me see if I can tap it again. where did these come through do you remember in Sedona at your I thought so. yeah. by the way this is ginger oh you guys not beer if you saw me drink that um driving you to drink you know you're driving me to drink already on this podcast oh man all right I, i'll get my act together here so let me see by the way i just have to mention this i can't resist sorry liz you're gonna kill me um she just happened to be wait were you on my live event mm -hmm. yeah oh, okay. i did i was like maybe she was we've been to sedona a couple times together um so i just have to mention this happened at my life event. I do guys weird things, funny things, great things, activations, magical things happen at live events. So I just wanted to mention this was at a secret to everything live event that not saying there's a connection, but there may or may not be. Okay. Sorry. It was just a little plug for myself. No, you're good. So I feel, so when I'm going back, so that first one, that is actually a, um, an activation to be able to see and bring through light code that feels around the top one there yeah. um that feels around like 70th to me um, that's interesting that's what I heard when I asked that question so, so oh funny. okay good that's a good confirmation I yeah. was like that seems like it's like high but oh. like it has to be high because of the yeah. fact that right that's to the activate you and bring you through it needs to be and I was at such like a high level and so pure when I brought those all through um, the next one down, sorry, I have to like go through and like ask. You're fine. The next one down, the um, transformation that feels like it's at, honestly, it feels like it's at like this 36th dimension. Yeah, I got that uh, close to that too. So yeah, okay. I agree. And then the expansion one. Twenty second dimension. Yeah, so these are all different levels. When mm -hmm. you first started drawing these, or they came through, I forget. Did you ask? 
like did you like how did it happen like tell me that story. I, <laughs> so I was given very specific instructions um to basically my purpose with this is to raise the vibration of the collective um mm -hmm. and to assist others to be able to do that as well if you know, however I can help them, help themselves and others. So basically I had seen, um, I was pretty much told that I needed to keep my body pure and keep myself pure so that I could be a pure channel to bring these through. And um, I initially, I'm not totally, I kind of had a remembrance of like who I was as a soul mm -hmm. when I had brought these through. And when I remembered that, I kind of went back to my soul groups to kind of like ask them to bring that through. I will say I definitely am much heavier on like asking for the Fae and elemental help. But at that time, I think there were several groups that were kind of popping in and assisting. Um, and it was it was really cool and I could kind of feel what was going on and who was assisting and stuff and like I said I can see so when I would see the specific colors come through um I would bring those through then I do things a little bit different now just because I was frying myself out but that's definitely how it started right now if somebody happened to which we're going to talk about in a minute when we go through some of these other ones if someone, um, you know, took a screenshot of this instant light code activation, is it possible that it could activate them if that was like within their soul desire mission? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, should I go over how to use them? Yeah. Why don't we good? go ahead before we show all the light codes? Why don't we, okay. I was trying to think which way I wanted to do it. We can go so, ahead. There's three here. For these ones, and these are just like the plain, like I drew them out in a notebook on paper. And um, what you would do is honestly, like I would probably print them out and mm -hmm. you can knock on it three times and that'll kind of like wake it up. And then you're going to put your hands over it and close your eyes and kind of visualize like the light code, like absorbing into your being. Um, and you'll feel, you'll feel it when it's finished processing and after it, um, processes and you can like feel it in there, uh, send a golden light back to it to show an appreciation and just like appreciation for like the elementals and any, um, Faye or any other beings who were assisting bring that through, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that's the best way to go about it. Always express gratitude. And then from there, you know, your light language or light codes, like that could come through by you looking at paper and doing what I do and drawing that out. Um, and there's also tons of people who like speak almost, um, they'll speak different light code, not, <laughs> I'm sorry, speak light language. And that could also, um, bring that through for them as well and it, i think to access that the best thing you can do is just sit and be in your own presence and be in kind of like a quiet space and like really like go within and then just like feel what pulls through for you i have to say my daughter and i um a couple of daughters and i we have them hung up various places throughout our home and i think it really I think everything's a tool and I don't think there's one thing to do to clear a house or clear a person or one thing to do. I think it's just a tool and really we're the tools. Um, but I think it's a good access point and it does, I think, help hold certain frequency uh, in a bean or if you hang it up and it's broadcasting, I think it raises the frequency of home and land. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show the next one and we'll talk about some of the other ways. What one is this? What does it say? This one is healing the womb. Ooh, wow. Whoa. Wow. That was also one of the first ones that came through. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think that was the very first one. Really? That's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. 
I'm getting really And I scared. really went with the, I feel like the energy of the event and it really came through to kind of help Ooh, all of the people. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. But I mean, it's so important to be able to go back through and like we carry so much trauma and wounding in our womb and it goes back generations and generations. But if we're able to heal that for us, we heal every generation before and after us. And this is to assist in doing that and mm -hmm. helping you like release some of that stuff that you just don't need to hang on to anymore. And I feel like the womb is such a sacred thing to, and it's, it's honestly, it's not bad for men to use this either because we, all ask that. From yeah. a womb. we, and oh, a womb is not masculine or feminine, you know, it's just, it's like the void. It is that all powerful, like creation. Um, and it's really just a thing that I, everyone should think about healing and working with that. Yeah, I love that. So um, it's so funny because like I made these slides and I wasn't really focused on them and they weren't really sitting in my field for very long. I just threw them up. Um, but, you know, I'm getting releases from them. Energy shifting sounds interesting. <laughs> um, all right. So a little different. This is a color one. Does the color mean anything? So this is actually the colors that I saw for, if you refer back to the first slide, this one was for transformation. Um, oh, and that's yeah. that one, yeah, number 36, the, this, the 36 dimension. And that was the colors I was seeing for it. So when it came through, I was seeing green for that one. So I kind of was able to represent and show you guys more what I was seeing with it. And that's why it's really cool that I also am able to do digital art with this because I'm able to bring kind of the vision full circle and it makes it easier kind of to broadcast the frequency like into a room or into your home um, or, you know, just to see it when it's like that. And it's easier to kind of pick up on like what's there in it. Versus just seeing like some lines on a paper. But yeah, right. this one was for transformation. Um, and um, when someone at the event had went and used it, um, she just had the craziest release and her whole body was shaking. And um, I was actually wow. kind of concerned because it was just such a powerful reaction. For um, transformation, wow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was... Uh, really really cool to see um and she just seemed so happy and like refreshed after doing it and it's just a really cool piece to work with I I mean I've went through and reused all of these and they're just really great tools to have and to be able to focus your intention and your energy in and you know set your mind to doing that if that's really what you want to do in your life at this time Mm -hmm. Some people I know print it out and put it in their cars. They put it under their mattress. They put it above their bed. They put it. I'm a big fan because, you know, mirrors are black mirror off world technology. So I put a lot of codes facing my mirror because it broadcasts out into all time and all space. So, and, you know, people have a lot of different ideas. Some people, you know, print them in micro size and they leave them in their wallet. Some people, um, I don't know, this might be considered littering, but some people have told me they do things like leave light codes, like, you know, on bulletin boards and stuff. Oh, I love that. I know. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, or, yeah. something like, you know, in like certain like bathrooms and stuff in restaurants, like they're deliberately graffiti bathrooms. I've heard people say they tape up, you know, how people like tape up like lost dog posters and stuff. They put mm -hmm. like yeah, so it's interesting. People oh, can get pretty creative. I'm so with them. happy to hear people are doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird, but cool. stuff I've heard in the rumor mill. Which oh. one is this? <laughs> that one was also one of the original. Oh, was it? Oh. Let me grab my, my fancy dancy notebook here. And see oh, it I wasn't one of these, but it was one of your originals. Wait a minute. Go back to it real quick. I don't think it was one of oh. these, was it? it was, I don't <laughs> think it was. It was okay. That, no. Nope, it wasn't update. Yeah. I'm not sure which one that was. I'm not sure which one it is either. No, I thought, wait, I bet I have it in this notebook. It's funny because I'm not getting, I wonder what it is because I'm not getting, like I was getting some release from the other ones and I'm not getting a lot of release from this. So I'll be curious. Now I have to know what it is. 
Now I'm just wondering if it was like a personal code for someone. Oh, maybe that's why I'm not getting it. Maybe it was a personal code, which we'll get to in a minute. Calm, everyone. We'll get to that. Or we can talk about it now. So Liz, what do you mean by a personal code? So for a personal code is like there, for instance, you had had a group of um, remembering uh, mm -hmm. clients. And so I did a remembering code for each one of them to help. So the intention oh, that was set was yeah. to help them right. to remember their soul and remember who they are as a soul. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a pretty good example. You could also say there's something like in your life where you're like, oh, I really struggle with being motivated. And I really wish I could have more mental clarity. I could bring through a light code specifically for you and the frequencies you need and the, what I see for you. And then I could create that for you so that you can uh, work with it. And I think it's really good, especially with like the personalized ones, not to just like sit with them for like a minute or two, but like really sit with them and try to make time for that every day and focus your intention while you're working with them. Um, if someone were interested in you doing like a personal or I guess themed like code, you know, how would they get a hold of you? Would they get a hold of you on Instagram? Um, I can't, I would probably rather them reach out to you. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll figure that out. So if you're interested. Yeah. Um, support at Kimberly McGeorge.com. People will be like, what are you talking about? Why are all these people writing me about light codes? <laughs> I'll get really confusing if they get a hold of me on my uh, Instagram. Okay, that's true. Yeah. Okay, don't do that. Don't get a hold of her on her Instagram. All right. So why, Liz, does this light code look so different from these light codes? This light code, like why, oh. what's the, like, why does it look so different? Um, That one there. I really like that background you use. That's fun. I know. Um, I do too. I like it too. Cool. Um, so that one came through. So those ones for, were from 2022. Um, and that was when everything was like pretty freshly downloaded. This mm -hmm. one was from like maybe a month ago, if that, maybe less than that. I don't know. Time all blends together. But right. um, this one is about connecting to your oversoul which is like an issue I think a lot of people have so this one I feel like I was able to utilize more frequencies than just like initially as I said I'd connect to like one channel this one I connected into a few different ones to bring through more like I feel like there is just like more of a variety of frequencies in this piece where the other ones, like when I started out, it was more like singular. Mm -hmm. And this one's a digital light code. So this one's one of the ones that I um, was able to pretty much do on my iPad so that, yeah, you guys could kind of see what I was seeing for it. Um, mm. But I'm to the point now that I don't really need to draw it all out on paper and stuff. I can kind of just see it and do it on my iPad now. So that makes it a little bit easier for me too. Um, but yeah, this one was a really cool one to bring through. And I definitely had given it to someone and she kind of went from seeming very depressed. And then by the time we were done interacting, she was smiling again and she seemed like pretty happy and like chipper. So I definitely stand, I mean, I stand behind all of my codes. I know that they work because, I mean, I, I the beings that come through that are assisting, because I always ask for it to be in the highest and best good of um, anyone using it. And I ask that um, only um, beings that are interested in helping everyone's highest and best good and raising the vibration of the collective come through and so um, what is this like oh this one what is the theme this one is connecting to your oversoul okay wow so you know when you're kind of feeling like lost or a little pushed out of your body or like you're not really you're not really in the fullness of you this would be a good one to sit with to kind of pull yourself back to center and then kind of remember like, okay, 
this is what I'm doing here versus, you know, all the mind chatter and how distracted we get. So, um, I was like going to ask you about this, it just like went out of my mind. Um, oh, is this kind of like, what's the difference between light codes and light language? Because language is like usually in my opinion uh, and in all time all space as opinion of a lot of et races the th the density of the language here is like a lower density thing and like light color and sound and telepathy is of course what we use in usually upper dimensions and et races um sometimes just music sometimes just color sometimes just sounds um so how would you say this is different or is um, it different i don't honestly think it's that different to me like light code is still you're i'm i'm conveying a frequency a a thing like i'm conveying a thing with a thing which is like the same thing as language when it comes down to it um, mm. it's not any different than if you wrote something on a piece of paper, this is me conveying that frequency by writing it down. Um, except it's, you know, done with, vibrational, right. <laughs> <laughs> done with higher vibrational vibration. tools than just, uh, you know, me writing a word down, but right, it's the spells. same, same concept. It's still language. Yeah, it's just like the language of the multiverse versus just the language of like 3D, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on. So Liz, I'm really curious, like why would you be allowed, so many of us are like targeted individuals and get like gang stalked and harassed and fly over why would you be allowed to like bring this forth in the world do you think like why is this like why are you able to do this without any sort of you know prosecution or do you feel like you have some so I feel <laughs> I feel like I've had some weird experiences um I've definitely had some weird weird experiences um but I feel like the truth of it is like I think anyone could bring this through if they really focus their energy in on it and really kind of remembered who they are and what they are able to do and I just think so many people like forget about doing that sorry I'm like looking at you and your dog and your I'm dog sorry. is just so frustrating <laughs> um my wife I mean, I've <laughs> definitely dealt with some super weird things I mean you have too, especially when we tried to, we had um, some light code <laughs> animal cards that we had tried to Oh, print. I forgot about that. Good point. Oh, and shoot. I'll add those, you guys. I'll add a picture of those so we can, um, hold on, actually. Okay. Hold on. Let, just give me a sec. Do you want to pause it real quick? So one of the projects that Liz and I worked on together uh, that kind of makes animals like codes galactic information all time all space stuff all together in a mixing bowl and this is what popped out our animal animal oracle cards um and liz is holding them right now so we thought it'd be really cool uh, liz is going to go ahead and shuffle and this is our intent even though this is recorded our intent is to pull the highest and best card for what is needed at the time for anyone who ever watches this podcast in you know forever <laughs> and what's that word perpetuity is that a word or am I just making up words um but anyway um, the right right, Liz. Uh, thanks Liz thanks for the backup but um so anyway per I don't know I'm usually really good at vocabulary but not so much tonight so Liz is going to go ahead right now and Ooh. live live recorded <laughs> shut Oh, and pull a card. So go ahead, and then I'll, I'll um read from our um, PDF, and then we'll add anything if something comes in. I'll add anything if something comes in. We'll right. kind of see what animal coming in. So we got Dragon Heart Alchemy of Affection. Can you show so, the card? Yes. 
Oh, hold on. Let me get this off a minute. And there, there we go. Hold on. Oh, okay. Um, so this card embodies the alchemy of the heart and the transformation power of relationships. And a dragon is obviously mighty and magical and it kind of calls to our own capacity to adapt and grow and change. And, and also there's this crucible fire element, obviously, of love and connection, but it's not always a smooth path to love and connection. I love that. And so this emphasizes true transformation uh, coming through the fiery trials and coming into this, you know, a fire can burn and a fire can nurture. And um, we kind of have that balance. So at this time, you're being called to bravely face the turbulence, harnessing the alchemical process to transmit misunderstandings into understanding, to uh, change hurt into healing and differences into deeper connections. This card is a testament to the potential within your heart energy, and it has an unparalleled power to change not only individuals, but the collective world around them. So that's perfect, right? So how can we apply this every day? You know, we can embrace challenges instead of resist them. We can recognize that challenges in relationships are opportunities for growth and approach them not as battles, but as refining fires that shape and strengthen bonds. Uh, we can use an introspective alchemy to regularly reflect on your feelings, identify the triggers and the negativity and the hurt and work toward transforming those emotions into patience, understanding, and love. And, you know, to nurture connections, we have to invest time, effort, and care, obviously, for those relationships to grow and flourish, and then balance. So we need that passionate fire, but we also need that coolness and walking away and that equilibrium. And then growth through love, acknowledging that every relationship, sexual, romantic, friendship, family is all filled with joys and challenges. And in the end, it's refining us. So use the dragon heart as your guide, embark on the sacred journey of heart alchemy and unlock your transformative energies that have the power to reshape not just your personal relationships, but also the tapestry of life itself. So there you go, kittens. Um, very cool card. Any thoughts that you want to add for the collective and our audience? I really, really, really kind of latched on to the part where you had said about... Um, kind of transmute how I took, I can't remember the exact phrase you said, um, but you kind of had said about like transmute. Oh my gosh. Wait, I'm having a moment. Pause. You're fine. <laughs> Wait, no, there was this one sentence. you. So I really love the part about transmuting misunderstandings into understandings and healing the hurt. And I feel like there's, so many people that really need to take that and you know there's so many people who kind of like really will get hung up on grudges and stuff and this is like a really good way that they could easily like push through that and I think especially just how volatile people can be now with like social media and uh I mean mostly social media it's really nice mm -hmm. to have something where you can like hold on to that to push through it and let go of things that are bogging you down because it's it's really holding you back in a ton of ways. And I think people kind of forget like that they're holding themselves back with the things that they're choosing to not let go of. And I just thought that was kind of cool. I just experienced a really interesting challenge in this area this week on social media, which, you know, cause you know me, I go through periods where I become the hermit and I crawl into a cave and I stop doing one-on-ones and I don't do mentoring and I do do live events, but I don't do a lot of classes and I just do my monthly groups and I kind of keep my head down and I hide out. And then I go through phases where I come out of the cave and part of coming out of the cave, as you know, with your business list is being on social media. It is putting yourself out there to be judged ridiculed mocked applauded celebrated it doesn't you know those do that duality and you and i know there's a lot of soulless beings and you and, and i know there's a lot of negative consciousness and dark energies and negative ets and agendas and programming and 
military and um, my labs and on and on and on, corporations and um, et cetera. One of the things, this is kind of a weird random take, but we can riff on it for a bit. I think I see what I see a lot online too is jealousy and triggering. Oh yeah. And I was really, really happy because I was viciously attacked for once. I don't think it was out of jealousy. I think it, I think I triggered her by my being and she attacked from her wounding. And I think mm -hmm. it's really important in relationships to Liz, which you were kind of bringing up when we get triggered our automatic thing to do is to flip around, project and lash out at the other person and try to destroy them. In my opinion, I'm learning and I don't get triggered as often to take that. First of all, that pause, even if we are triggered and be like, okay, is there any truth? First of all, I think it takes a very enlightened, balanced person to say, okay, you're coming at me full force, but the first thing I'm going to do is take the pause before I say anything and say, is there truth here? So one of the accusations against me, and I'm just going to be really open and honest, uh, was being inauthentic with my appearance, which is hilarious because I had put up a picture and I don't know if you struggle with this. We talked a little bit about how everybody uses um, filters and professional pictures or you know what I mean? younger pictures even if we're not in the dating scene that's a whole nother discussion but I had put up a picture that was a hundred percent me sorry guys of when I was younger also before I had COVID and when my hair was longer and thicker and blonder and um anyway she was saying because she found this one or two pictures of this let's say more inauthentic you know even though it was me it wasn't like another person it wasn't you know what I mean? Like your hair's yeah. red. It might've been blonde. It might've been dark. Right. You know, she and I was inauthentic, but you know, what's hilarious about that Liz? First of all, I'm like, okay, does she have a point? I'm like, absolutely. Because guess who's been going through my social media, taking that down on my own conviction. Me, just because I mm -hmm. miss them. And you know, when someone's digging for dirt on you, they're going to find it. She launched her whole base attack. So I think that's one reason why I wasn't triggered because it was like, not totally true, but true. Does that make sense, Liz? So yeah, able to step back and be like, okay, you know, this vicious attack or whatever, it's not true. So then I was able to say, okay, but where is the wounding in her? Where is this coming from? Then you can have compassion. And I think we can do this for random strangers. I think we can do this for family members. Um, I've had some issues in my family, as you know, we can do it for partners. Um, and, you know, I think we can do it with our friends. So, you know, I, I kind of love that that card came up. Another thing I want to bring up is the vicious division in the spiritual community. I want to talk a little bit about that. What do you think about that? Do you not think? Oh, gosh. That I think it's so wild that there's so many people who could be helping each other and benefiting each other and bringing each other up. And instead, they just start attacking each other and biting at each other's ankles and it's just so backwards because it really should be a thing. Like I think people fall into ego so easily. And then when they fall into ego, they really lose touch with the whole point of being on, you know, a spiritual path, the path that they're trying to go. And everyone's path is different and their reasoning for everything is different. Absolutely. But, you know, a lot of healers and, um, yeah, a lot of people like just end up like being really resistant to new information. And instead of being like, wait a second, maybe they are right. Maybe I should try to digest this and see where they're coming from. Like maybe they know something I don't know, but there's so many people who think that like their cup is full already. Like they think they know everything, but they're missing, you know, they're in this little teacup and there's gallons, there's Love gallons that. that they could be tapping into that they're really just missing out on because they're so stuck in there. Like I'm right. And sometimes like, sometimes we're not right. Sometimes we learned old information and it needs updated and that's okay. I love that. One of the things that I've been having a problem with, it's funny because it relates to this podcast and I know I can do it with you is finding people 
whether they're way out there or not, it doesn't matter, famous or not known, that I can have honest discussions with. Like if I brought up something right now, like if I'm like, the sky is always black, Elizabeth, I th- you and I could actually be fine. We could. I could literally say right now, you guys, to Elizabeth, the sky is black. And she could be like, eh, pretty sure it's bluish. And we would be fine. We could have a, a respectful, don't you agree? Oh, yeah, yeah we, we could totally. And I would be like, well, where I am, it's blue. But where you are, if that's your experience, I'm not going to argue with it because I have no idea. Actually, right now, Elizabeth, my sky is black. My sky is also black. <laughs> <laughs> that was, but let's go deeper. I could also, you guys are like, well, that's silly. No, no, no. You guys are going to have a big discussion about it. But guess what? We have, Liz and I have triggered each other having disagreements of opinion and we're fine. We step back a little and we're like, okay, one of us goes one way, we go in the middle or we don't change our mind at all. And guess what? That's okay. And this is what I'm really asking you guys. And, and if you're interested, please get a hold of me, support at KimberlyMcGeorge.com. I'm really loving the ideal of not a boring panel discussion. You guys, I watch panel, I love panels, but I love like fiery interesting respectful loving panels i don't like like dull dead energy everybody agrees we all we're in group think and we all agree the same thing can't do that but whether you want to come and have even if you guys violently oppose me like i love that so much i got to where i am now by asking the question who says who says you know you read this book you know, David Wilcox says this, Corey Good says this, who says, who says, how do they know? Like digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And I love to be challenged, you know? Um, but I like people that also, you know, are intelligent thinkers and they can present themselves in a mature way. And what I see in the community that I'd like to change is we should be able to put each other under a little bit of a microscope or a magnifying glass. Not in attack, but in... You know what people said this to me. They're like, do you know you can be a little harsh? Uh, yes, I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware I can be, you know, I might not mean it. I'm aware I can be a little blunt and a little harsh. Now, guess what I do with that information? I have an opportunity. I look at myself and I'm like, am I accurately reflecting my soul experience in the way I want to? Yes or no? Am I fine? Or maybe I'm not fine and maybe I adjust. And so I don't mind, you know, a personal attack is being like, I hate your necklace. Or your hair looks weird, or I don't like the color of your eyes, or your nose is crooked. I'm not talking about Liz, by the way. I'm just saying that's personal. Like we don't need to go personally attacking people, you know. But if you want to challenge and say, I think it's ludicrous that you think there's, and I actually had people kind of do this, but she was really respectful about it. I was on a, I was like asked on a podcast, and I said, well, there's soulless beings and I moved on because that's like, to me, like given, like known, but it's not Liz. Not everybody has ever come across that concept or taught that, especially if they, you know, heavily religious program. And she was like, and I'm like, whoa, that hit with resistance. And this was such a beautiful answer. You know what she said? She said, it's not resistance. She said, it's a new concept and I'm taking it in. I love that. That's so good. You can almost make me cry, Liz. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I would hope that if you or anyone introduces a new concept that is based on some sort of, not rumor. See, the problem I have is, and you and I both have this advantage, not only is one of my gifts extremely sharp discernment and reading a frequency at a high accurate level, not that I can't be wrong, but I also have, uh, you know, t- other tools that are very sharp and very neutral. So it's harder for me maybe than some people because not everybody's gift is that, you know, not everybody's gift is that sharp truth discernment. So usually I just did this with you, didn't I? I just read you an email where someone was making claims. They made like 10 claims in the email. And did I not say partially true, true, false, lie? Yeah mostly true she believed you know whatever because it's just like instant because truth has a frequency now you had a good point Liz because my truth could be true and your truth could be true too Mm -hmm. because as our friend Raya pointed out 
our timelines are individual, but they overlap. Liz's timelines and mine may not always overlap. We may go our separate ways. So we even call it that. Have you guys ever thought about that? You say, well, we went our separate ways. We, we divorced, so we went our separate ways. My friend went their separate way. We even say that, right? I see that as we're off on infinite different, you know, different time time lines. Lines. you know, for now we're walking along. And, and again, I love the vector that's been being brought to mind. And if you guys don't know what a vector is, I can throw up a, I'll throw up a diagram or is it called a Venn diagram? It might be called a Venn diagram. I'm not sure, Venn but diagram, I know it's like, yeah. so it's where, you know, Liz is a circle and I'm a circle and Liz and I might be like three fourths overlap, but some people and I might just be two circles sitting beside each other. You know, there might not be any overlap. So I'm interested at this point in my life in, you know, allowing people into my circles where there's some overlap because that gives you something to build on and something you have in common. But I, I, Liz and I will both tell you right now, I don't believe Liz and I believe the same thing about every spiritual topic. I don't think we do, or the same no. levels, the same intensity or the same, you know, we're still processing things. And I, I like my podcasts and my friendships and my panel discussions and the shows that I'm on. I like, to create that and people are resistant to this term and I don't know why, but I want a safe space. I want a safe space in my relationship. I want a sp safe space in my friendships and my family on my podcast. And I want you guys to feel safe. So people sometimes get offended when I interview them. And then I go back and I said, well, I don't totally agree with this and I don't endorse this. And then they're like, well, I feel blindsided or hurt or whatever. Don't because if I don't feel that we can create a safe space together, like Liz and I obviously can't, then I'm not going to challenge you or push you and make you feel uncomfortable for me to disagree with you. Do you know what I'm saying, Liz? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have because any you don't about want any of that randomness? <laughs> yeah, no, because you don't ever want to put someone in a situation where, you know, after you guys have the interaction, like you both feel really weird about it afterwards. You want to be able to be like, Oh, well, you know, like, for instance, um, you know, like, oh, well, I eat meat and oh, well, I don't eat meat. You have to be able to discuss like both angles of a thing without either person being like, you're a bad person because you eat meat, you know, and you're I think, wrong, I'm right. right, or you're exactly yeah. that you're wrong. I'm right. Or you're lower than me. I'm higher than you. It's, it's yeah, just yeah, that too, right? like the same kind of thing of being able to have a healthy discussion and just respecting other people's choices at the end of the day and their viewpoints, but also being able to talk about the differences and why people think about things the way they think about things. I love that too. I think there's an immaturity and, and I may be painting with too broad a brush, but I've been on some panel discussions where I was viciously attacked for stating again, and, and this may be my fault for being naive, what I consider obvious all time, all space concepts and being viciously attacked in a public forum. And I, and I just want to say to you guys that if you do come on, I want you to feel free to disagree or challenge me respectfully because you are never going to be attacked by me in a, in, you know, in my classes, no one has ever been publicly attacked in my classes or um, made to feel small you know, for having a different opinion. As a matter of fact, I welcome questions. I welcome disagreement. I welcome challenges because I think they divided and conquered quite effectively where instead of coming with our piece of the puzzle is and saying, let's get to 75D and get out of here as fast as possible. We're like clutching our puzzle pieces and they're getting mangled. And, and when we even do a line, we can't even fit them together because we're just so clinging to our own do you know what I mean defended the yeah, death can't be rigid. you know and the the citation says and, this and you're wrong or or the grays told me this you know and, and maybe that's true or is it is it just true for you is it true for one is it true for a thousand there's just so many I love that you said this Liz you said there's so many ways to think of things is it true from the bottom up? Is it true from the top down? Is it true in the 50th dimension? Is it true in the second? Is it true in all? Like, and what is truth? I mean, I don't think the spiritual community has effectively wrestled with these questions, to be honest with you. 
Yeah. Also, the only way for anyone to truly learn something new is to be presented with new information. And because of just us as people, we get hit with that cognitive dissonance because we're like, no, I know this. So this can't be right because I already know this because we're so firmly grasped and rigid onto this one thing that like you people just don't let go of it. But if they were able to be a little more soft, like your one friend who was like, no, this is just new. I'm processing this. Like, I love that. What and like if more people took the time to be like, oh, wait, I'm being presented with new information. Like maybe, maybe you are right. Maybe I should reevaluate what I know because it's very possible you learned something along your path that I didn't learn yet. You know? Absolutely. Beautiful. And, okay. Yeah. I also think we discount and don't acknowledge and don't want to acknowledge the implants, both physical and etheric, the programming. I'm not talking about the big programs. I'm not talking about religious even or medical, but religious could be in it or educational. I'm not talking about the big programs. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the other, the subtle programming, the program, the insertions in dream time where they're trying to, where we just discovered something really exciting. You go to bed and you wake up and you're like, what was it that I even you know, turned on for me last night. Like they can snatch that. They can bury it. They can take that. They can replace that with a false memory. And again, instead of coming alongside each other and saying, guess what? And you know, this is true. Certain people have definitive tools to say, okay, I'll admit it. Some days I come up hardcore MK Ultra still like scary, but true. Not every day, not every week. Uh, and we're all, of course, under MK Ultra. We're all under programming. And we're not just under programming from one corporation or one organization. And I think the awareness of that breaks some of it and lessens it. If you know your program, again, you can take that pause. You can you can be like, I thought, you know, I was randomly filming. I think you know this. You might not. I'm, yes, you do. I think you do. I was randomly filming something else. We won't say what. And I caught a, what I call a ghoul wearing a black, it is class A, you guys. You guys would all agree. And, and I'll show it in another video. It's on YouTube, so crazy. It's, does it not look like, do you know what I think it looks like? I think it looks like without the, what is it? The, the cutting thing, the death, death. Uh, what is uh, the guy with the Sith? What is that called? The angel of death? The Grim Reaper. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. Does it not look like the Grim Reaper without the, um, it does kind of give off that vibe. But yeah, when you showed me that video, I remember like playing it back and like a couple of times and my stomach just hurt because I could just like sense and like- you feel the energy. Like, well, oh no. no. I was driving you guys and I was filming something else. But what I caught was this ghoul Grim Reaper character. You can even see, you know what I love? that You can see the black robe blowing in the wind as it goes through the wall of the house. But I caught like what? 10 seconds in daylight, you guys, daylight of this ghoul, not a person dressed up. It's just a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, maybe. Yeah. In daylight, you know, across from a tree into the side of a house. It is the most amazing video. Now, if I were my mother, I would be like, that's a person dressed in a Halloween costume, right? Why could you kind of see through it? Yeah, and why did it walk through <laughs> the wall of a house? But my mother would still say that. So again, that's that cognitive dissonance that you talked about and not being open to information. But how amazing, what if you didn't believe that there were other beings other than like physical animals and people? Like how profound if you knew that video and you could be proven that the video wasn't doctored or green screened, which it's not, and anybody could prove it. I mean, it's raw on my phone and it's all time stamped and everything. But what I'm saying is like, how amazing for someone, like how big does our world get? If we only used to believe like that makes me happy. Yeah. It might be scary, but it's also so exciting and magical. Don't you think Liz? That little oh, people absolutely. Because yeah. Okay, there, might be, there might be some creepy stuff, but there's also like, what about all the wonderful stuff too? You know, instead of being like, Oh, wait. Okay. So this school just like ran through a wall. Might be kind of cool if you see like a cute little like fae like flying around your bushes too. 
And if you open your mind up and like break past those mental barriers, like, and release some of that programming so you can start experiencing some of that, that will also, um, yeah, that that's also kind of part of the thing with like the light codes, because there was a long time where I had channeled and I was able to like see um, the things and I didn't really know what I was channeling at that time and I didn't really know what I was doing but and the, I got to this point where I was like man I really like I just really want to be able to do light codes and the only thing that was stopping me was me and my resistance and my own like thinking that I needed to break through some crazy wall so that I'd be able to do it but all I needed to do was sit down and look at a piece of paper and draw it out I was um, I think that retreat that you had really, I had some just insane breakthroughs at that. And that I really can't take that because I don't know, I would have just probably kept doubting myself and be like, oh, well, I don't know about this. I don't know. But it got to the point where it was like, so like in my face of like, oh no, this, this is real. This works. There's people having like positive experiences from it. You're helping people with it. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it works. The important cool. thing though is you just talked about one of the things people are like, how do I activate my sick abilities? I feel really psychic. I feel this. I feel that. How do I know? And I think you said an important thing that some people might have missed, which is you just, you might have even doubted or had some weird thought in the back of your head, but you tried, you like presented it and then you observed like an experiment kind of um, and people responded and gave you feedback and that's the same thing with any psychic ability in my opinion if I hadn't started speaking out loud in college and that's a big risk with you know 20 year olds to be like yeah he's gonna break up with you in two weeks Ooh, like who wants to know that you know positive and negative or he's gonna ask you to marry him in two weeks like who wants to be wrong but to have that you know, I got really, really, I think, I think inherently good at reading multiple timelines. I think that's an inherent ability through all time and space, but I didn't know that it was a real ability just like yours until I spoke it out loud. And, and there has to be a risk. And sometimes we might be wrong and there's a learning curve and we're like, oh, I saw that, but that meant that even you have learning curves with your light codes. Oh yeah. Like, oh, I brought this in and then this came in and then I'm like, whoa, what does this mean? Is this corrupted? Like, there is a learning curve and there is a observation and then you change direction. You even took us through how you started and you know, where it's at now and how you're like, it's not better or worse. It's just different. It, you're now using a little There's, more AI, you know, right. A little more color, a little more, it, it's a little faster, easier. I assume I might be speaking for you than drawing by hand. I'm not sure, but and, and again, you guys, stop being afraid. Like, who do you love? Like, I want you to remember who you are, not worry about being wrong. Like, let's stop worrying about being wrong. And let's just represent as ourselves and put our abilities forth, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. And once you let go of that fear of like, well, what if I'm wrong? So what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong a hundred times and then the hundred and first time you're right. And then you're right. Every time after that, awesome. you're never going to know unless you keep trying. And like you said, for a long time, it was you stopping you and you're like, forget it. This is coming in. I'm going to put it on the paper and then I'm going to share it with someone. And, and it was magical and it's been magical ever since. And you've helped a lot of you've helped the collective and you've helped a lot of people. And a lot of you guys are sitting on a gold mine as far as your gifts. You know, we all have these gifts and we all have a lot of them. Do I particularly think my gift is like codes? No, but there could be a lifetime, right, Liz, where I did like codes. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's possible. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, somebody actually says that, um, that that's one of, I have some weird association with light codes, but I do have association with you in frequencies of course same and had we never crossed paths I never would have understood probably how to utilize my light codes and it's kind of crazy when you think about that and timelines and stuff like I probably would have never came across um 
I always knew I had gifts, but I don't think I would have been able to up level them to the level that I have had I not been able to kind of talk to you and run things back and forth with you and be like, hey, um, so I think this is, and then you're like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> and yeah, I think it's really, really wonderful to be able to work with someone else who, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> has like more experience and knows what they're doing. And I think anyone that gets to work with you is super blessed. And it's just really awesome seeing you be able so to help sweet. so many people. You're so sweet. Yeah, I said today, I said, did I say it to you? No, I think I said it to Isabel. I just got a, I, I did a scan and, you know, I let them ask questions and I got a little feedback. And I said, I think I'm making a difference at least one person at a time. And that's a very rewarding thing. And even if you guys never have a podcast or never launch a website, like just being a star seed, just being the races that you are and holding that frequency. I see so many people with like these Jedi Christ frequencies and they're so down on themselves and they have all this negative and you and I, everybody struggles with it a little all this negative self-talk. But when I look at them, they're like the most just magical beings. Like, and you meet people like that too, that come into your tattoo studio um, that walk out a different person because of you see and are able to reflect in your interaction, not just the artistic, not just the tattoo, but you know, in who you are and your abilities of being able to see the essence of the soul, people walk out different and you're also not just affecting the clock dip, which you are, but you're also affecting people, I believe, one person at a time. And that's a beautiful thing. And I think Liz and I, I'm going to ask Liz her final thoughts, what she'd want to share with you. But I think there's a lot of gems in here for, uh, to answer a lot of questions people write me and talk to you about and have in general in consciousness, you know, about gifts and other things. So what would be your final thoughts that, you know, if this was the last time you ever had to talk to a decent audience what what would you like to leave them with tonight or today? Um, I honestly, I think that I would really like you guys to utilize the codes that we've shown you this evening and really tap into that. And I would love to hear some feedback if you guys have some like really positive and profound or even small like positive experiences. Um, I would just really love for you guys to tap into that and tap into yourselves and really like sit with yourselves and see where you need to pull you into you so you can focus on tapping into your own gifts because every single person, as you said, has their gifts and it would just be so, so beautiful, um, for everyone to bring those all to light, you know? this is mine. And I'm sure there's other people who have the same gift I do. And I'm sure there's other people who have like things that they can do that are just as like profound. And, you know, you just need to make that time for yourself and really take care of yourself to bring that through so that you can help yourself and help everyone else. And also when you heal others, you're also healing yourself because at the end of the day, we are all like experiencing this separate, but we are all kind of like in the same boat. Um, yeah, but I'm it's been good. really, really wonderful being able to be on here and talking to you as always. Um, oh, you're so sweet. Well, thank you. It's been yeah. my pleasure and our pleasure. I'm glad I got to share your beautiful gifts with the world and really quick. Um, and I'll bring up Liz's stuff too again, but secret everything.com. If you'd like a scan to live events, one in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which may be full, um, still some room in uh, North Carolina near uh, on Lake Norman, a uh, beautiful house on the lake. And uh, the theme is the light through all time. We'll be doing body work. We're going to be doing uh, ex massive expansion, uh, reminding who you are dimensionally connecting you to your, gifts i'm sure some people will get activated just as liz was like woof uh you know activated at, at the one uh retreat so it's always a great time um with sincere people who are loving and respectful and support each other and just some groundbreaking amazing things always happen at those live events um, i'm gonna bring liz's uh monthly group liz is in an ultimate evolution 
uh, processes, teaching, questions, um, access to me, all sorts of great things too. Um, that's all on my website scans. Um, and I will be doing sneak preview, which I'll do a whole video on. I was supposed to do it tonight, but it'll probably be tomorrow at this point. Um, and I, I don't remember the name of it, but it's really advanced working in the astral. So how to manage this reality uh, by kind of coming in a different door and really advanced techniques of working in the astral will be coming up in about three or four weeks. So you can, the guys can look for that. We'll go back to Liz. Liz, what do you want to say about your information? Oh, um, so I, uh, beyond doing light codes, I'm a tattoo artist. Um, so if you are ever interested in getting a tattoo for me, feel to feel free to message me on my Instagram at lizard Ollie tattoos. Um, also, I do ritual tattoos as well, where I can bring through a design that I think would be beneficial to you after, you know, we would have some questions we would go over and really personalize it to you and what would serve you for your highest and best good. Um, so I also do offer that. Uh, it, but I, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much all I got. Um, okay. Beyond awesome. that. Oh yeah. I wanted to tell you guys, I, I, I'm, I don't want to record after this, which I would have to animal animal Oracle cards are available on the Etsy store. If you guys want to pick up your own. Um, how many cards are there, Liz? 36. There's 36 beautiful cards, um, which would also make, I, I haven't printed these out. I need to print some of these out and hang them all over my house. I haven't done that yet, but you can also do that. So, but we actually have the cards if you want to use them as a deck. And Liz and I'll probably do a live in the next, hopefully if I can get her, give me some time, half hour, hour in the next 30 days. And we'll do some, um, personal animal i know you guys will love this we'll go live and do some personal animal oracle polls and maybe some of your other decks that you're familiar with we'll see but definitely we could do some of these live for people it would be kind of fun so maybe yeah, we'll next time we go fun. even if it was just a half hour or 40 minutes it'd be kind of oh, a fun yeah. live show Absolutely. i would love that maybe, yeah maybe we'll do that next time so again the beautiful amazing Elizabeth Allenbacher in Pennsylvania. You could be, you know, her, she books up with her tattoos. There are some people flying in, uh, she's starting to get well known, follow her Instagram, um, you know, get her animal Oracle cards, come to live events, check me out, check her out. Uh, thanks for watching. We really appreciate you guys. We love you. Please like, and subscribe and we will see you next time. Right, Liz. Oh Yeah. All right. Bye, you guys.